When we're doing timber inventories, or as we call them, timber cruises, there can be different reasons why we do them. Uh, a, a very obvious and frequent reason is because we're doing a timber sale. Uh, a timber inventory that's done on behalf of the buyer or the seller can let the seller know whether he or she is getting a fair price for the timber when the offers come, have some idea what to expect when they're doing a timber sale. A timber say, uh, cruise on behalf of the buyer lets them know what they should bid on the timber based on their own needs. But so timber sales, thats a, we think of that probably the most frequent reason why we do timber inventory. But we also do timber cruises, timber inventories, for the purposes of developing management plans. In the process of doing that inventory, we not only learn the value of what's out there, the volumes that are out there, but we're able to assess the condition and the treatments needed, and from that, develop a management plan that, as we learn later in the semester, uh, semester uh, is based on what the landowner's objectives are, as well as the condition and value of the timber. Another reason for doing timber inventory is for estate planning purposes. Uh, you may be interested in passing on an estate to your kids. You may uh, want to look at what your options are in terms of maybe money that you can spend doing improvement versus putting money in other investments. And so you have to have an idea of what you've got, how it's growing, what its value is. And then another reason why we do timber inventories is to establish tax basis. We'll also be talking about that later when we talk about tax and incentives. But when you purchase timber or you inherit timber, you want to have a, a good estimate of what the value is of that timber at the time you acquire it so that later when you sell the timber you're able to deduct a basis or some portion of the basis from your taxable income from doing the timber sale. But you have to have that uh, inventory in which to establish your basis. We're going to briefly discuss the way that timber inventories are done using plots. Now in this course we do want to give you some exposure to a to couple of basic concepts. Uh, the first is when you're doing timber inventory it could be done by measuring the volumes on whatever your merchandising limits and criteria are of every tree that is out there in the woods. Um, it is sometimes done for very high value trees or for small stands called a 100% tally. Everything is measured, but you can imagine if you're doing an inventory on 40 acres, 50 acres, and maybe you're averaging somewhere between 60 to 100 trees per acre, that's a lot of trees to measure. It's not practical. So in forestry, we do sampling to do timber inventory, uh, and in forestry, it's called timber cruising. And there are different ways of doing it. Two of the most basic ways of doing timber inventory with sampling are to use what are called fixed radius plots or variable radius plots. And this particular plot here is a diagram of a fixed radius plot. So a plot can be of different sizes. You want to be cons obviously use the same size throughout the stand when you're doing an inventory. Conventions for uh, fixed radius plots or tenth acre plots, uh, fifth acre plots, they could be any, but they're often, uh, very often there are tenth acre plots that are used. So if you do the geometry to get the radius of a tenth acre plot, uh, 43,560 square feet in an acre, a tenth of that, 4356 square feet in a tenth acre plot. Do the geometry and it comes out to be a radius of 37.2 feet. So if you're putting in a fixed radius plot that is used to determine 
the sample, the trees to be sampled, you would establish a plot center and then try to determine every tree that is within that 37.2 feet radius all around. So this is a diagram that was done, and these are trees of different diameters, and we can see from this which trees are in or to be counted. So any tree that is entirely within that radius of that fixed radius plot are trees that are in, so to speak, and they are to be measured based on whatever the measurement criteria there are. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees it looks like that are in. If a tree is on the margin or the edge of the plot, but the center of the diameter of the tree is in, then it's still considered a counter tree. Uh, or another way, a convention that is often used uh, is that you could count every other tree if for trees that are on the border. But if you're, uh, other, you can also, if you're doing it on the most precise basis, you would look at where the center of the tree is and determine it's in, or there's one that's on the edge, or that's out. So that's how a fixed radius plot is, works. So a forester would measure every tree based on whatever the merchandising criteria were that was in each one of these plots and he would allocate enough of these plots within a stand to give a precise uh, measurement. And now modern day tools that foresters use are inventory programs that are on something like a cell phone. As the forester is doing the plots begin to tell him how precise the measurements are and he can determine how many plots he needs in a stand, he or she needs in a stand, to get a statistically tight enough estimate. But that's how a fixed radius plot works. On the reverse side, we'll talk about a variable radius plot. You can imagine on a fixed radius plot that if you're the person doing the measurement and you're standing there at the center, uh, it can be a little bit difficult on a tape, using a tape, like a logger's tape, to determine those edge distances. It really takes two people, one at the center and one at the edge, or you could put some kind of a post or anchor here. But it's a little bit cumbersome to get a precise reading as to where that boundary is using a fixed radius plot. A way around that is the variable radius plot. And that is a totally different system based on the use of an optical instrument called a prism. And so you can see the prism here, and in a few minutes we'll show you how the prism works. But using this optical instrument, you determine which trees are considered countable trees, or the ones to be measured, and which ones are not. And it's based on a proportion on a proportional basis based on diameter. So the larger the tree with the prism at the very center of the plot, the more likely it is to be considered a cannibal measurable tree. The smaller it is, the less likely. And so on this diagram here, uh, you, can, you can see how this works. This tree here is a very large tree that would be, and we'll, we'll demonstrate it with the prism, would be a cannibal tree. This tree of this diameter is considered a cannibal tree, but if it were far enough out, uh, it would not be. And so we'll show how that works with the prism. So you end up uh, not needing a second per person on the other end of a tape to determine the trees to be measured. Instead, you use that optical instrument, and then you measure the trees that are considered to be in trees, as we see there. But this is a, the, the, using this variable radius plot accomplishes two things. It's a very precise way of determining which trees are to be counted or not without having to have a second person to determine where the margin of a fixed radius plot is. The other 
function and or factor of this kind of a timber cruise is that you're disproportionately sampling the bigger trees because the bigger the tree is the more likely it is to be a cannibal tree at a given distance from the plot center and so by sampling disproportional to uh, and proportional to the diameter you're sampling in proportion to the value of the trees that is you're measuring more of the large high value trees than you are the small trees that might be pulpwood only and there are ways that you correct for the disproportion when you're doing your stand level estimates but you have a higher confidence limit in the larger trees the larger value trees